The amount you pay for gas and electricity will drop by an average 12.3% on the 1st of April, primarily because the unit rates, the amount you pay for each unit of gas and electricity you use, are dropping substantially. Although the standing charge, the daily charge you pay just for having the facility of having gas and electricity, are rising outrageously. I'm Martin Lewis from MoneySavingExpert.com and this is a briefing to explain what is really happening. First thing I'd say to you, beware some of the headlines out there like typical energy bill to fall £238 a year from April. First of all, this is just the price cap from April until June. It's not a year-long price cap. So that £238 a year should say it's pro rata that saving. And secondly, what's a typical bill? We shouldn't talk in this typical bill form. It's just complicated. So back to basics. The energy price cap dictates the maximum rate that providers can charge if you're on their standard tariffs. And the vast majority of people in England, Scotland and Wales are on firm standard tariffs right now. So the energy price cap dictates what you pay. Firms can actually charge less than the price cap. It's called a cap, but they don't. So in practice, it dictates what you pay. And the 1st of April price cap lasts until the end of June. So it moves every three months. And it is predicated mainly on the wholesale rates, but not the wholesale rates for the time that you're paying. The 1st of April price cap is based on average wholesale rates between the middle of November to the middle of February. That's why they've just announced it. So there is a time lag here. The best way to think about this is on average with a 12.3% cut for every £100 you spend on energy right now, use the same in April and you'll pay roughly £87.70p. Well, there's some complexities to that I'll go through, forward through in a moment. What's going to happen afterwards? Well, the predictions right now is it will drop again substantially on the 1st of July and then rise a little bit in October. But that's a rise compared to July's price, not now. It will still likely be cheaper in October than it is right now. Very substantially cheaper in October, about 20% cheaper in October than it is right now, if those predictions are correct. So prices are coming down substantially. Of course, geopolitics could change all that. Things could change, but that's where the predictions are currently. So let's run through the big changes. I'm going to do this for direct debit prices, although it's pretty similar for prepay and for payment in receipt of bills. And the prices I'm talking are UK averages, even though in practice they're all regional. So just see this as scales of magnitude. First of all, standing charges up. The electricity standing charge going up to 60.1p a day, that's up 12%. The gas standing charge up to 31.4p a day, that's up 6%. The electricity unit rate down to 24.5p, down 14%. The gas unit rate down to 6.04p, down 19%. Now, as most people, the majority of their bill is made upon the unit rate, not the standing charge. That's why overall you will save money. And the, the cuts on the unit rate are bigger than the increase on the standing charge. But of course, the more you use, and especially the more gas you use, the bigger your percentage saving will be. The less you use, and the more electricity you use, the smaller your percentage saving will be. But even having said that, unless you have an absolutely empty property, even if you've tiny usage, you will still be saving. Not as much, but you will still be saving. So many people I've seen on social media saying, well, the rise in the standing charge is going to cancel out the other savings. It doesn't in practice. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I've campaigned against the standing charge for a very long time. I think it's a moral hazard. I think it is a poll tax. I think it disincentivizes people on lower bills for cutting their bills. There's a consultation out there at the moment from Ofgem. We hope to hear it report back in six weeks, but it didn't happen in time for this price cap. But I will continue campaigning. I've spoken to two energy secretaries of states. I've spoken to the chancellor. I've written papers to Ofgem on it about the standing charge. But I need to be honest with you. Ranting about the standing charge means that you won't gain isn't true. The standing charge rise is outweighed for virtually everybody by the cut in the unit rates. The other staggering thing here is that prepayment is set to be the cheapest price cap. Now, as someone, again, who's campaigned for years that the most vulnerable in society pay the most because they're on prepayment tariffs and they are the most expensive tariffs, this is quite shocking. But from the 1st of April, the prepayment price cap will be 3% cheaper than the direct debit price cap. The reason why you used to pay much higher standing charges on prepay, they've now been equalised with direct debit and the unit rates are cheaper on prepayment meters. Now, before you instantly think, aha, I'm going to move from direct debit to prepay because most people are on direct debit, a couple of thoughts. First of all, 
Monthly direct debit helps manage your cash flow. You pay the same each month. It's smoothed out over the year. On prepayment, you would have to find the cash to pay each time. But probably more importantly, once the market comes back to switching, and I think that will start to happen from the 1st of April because the hideous uh, market stabilization charge, which is where outrageously Ofgem allowed or made firms where a new customer switched to them because they could charge cheaper rates because of wholesale prices, compensate the old energy firm. The new firm had to compensate the old firm. I mean, that's totally put people, put firms off offering switching tariffs. That goes on the 1st of April. There are other things I would like to them to get rid of that make switching come back even more quickly. But I think that will start to kickstart switching. And when switching does kickstart, then most of the cheapest tariffs are about direct debit. They're not, you don't get cheap prepaid tariffs. So my summary guess for where we'll be in future, I'm stronger than the guess, can't quite confirm it, is if you're the type of person who switches, direct debit is where the savings will be. If you never switch, prepay is set to be cheaper than direct debit on the price cap. So that will be your winner in future. Now, there's loads more I could talk about. I could talk about whether you should be fixing at the moment, um, that I could mention the fact that you should go into the Eon Next tariff if you're going to stick on the price cap, because as long as you're happy with Eon and you have, you have a smart meter or prepared to get one, it's the price cap, but 3% cheaper. I could talk about all those things, but I wanted to keep this short and sweet. So for those, please go to the Is It Time to Fix or Switch guide that's on moneysavingexpert.com, where you can read full analysis of the tariffs that are available right now and whether you'll save. This was just my broad brush on what's happened today. Hope it helped.